By the end of this video, you will learn the concept of result builders and how they can help you to define a special syntax that will make your code less verbose and easier to compose complex objects. In Swift, a result builder is a feature that allows you to define a custom DSL or domain-specific language to build a result value from a series of expressions. A DSL is like creating your own language inside a language. The best example to describe a DSL in Swift is SwiftUI. SwiftUI uses its own result builder called ViewBuilder to construct views from a more concise and readable syntax, making composition really easy. Without ViewBuilder, SwiftUI will look like this. Essentially, the view will look identical, but definitely the code will be more verbose and tedious to maintain. Now that you know the main purpose of Result Builder, let's build our own. For this demo, we are going to create a very simple HTML page using Swift. In order to display the page, we will use a web view from WebKit wrapped in a UI view representable. The goal will be providing a string with HTML code to render it in the screen. Let's start with something pretty simple, like displaying a heading, a paragraph, and a table with a few static rows. This will be the code to display that. We're also adding a title and a metadata to render the page in full screen according to the device width. Now, one idea would be just copy and paste it and create a string literal with it. But this is not a good idea. Strings typos are not captured by the compiler. In fact, it has a few of them already. So we don't want that. We want a more robust way to build our web page. For that, we will create a few objects that would represent HTML tags. Each tag will conform to this protocol called HTML tag that will have a single function render to return a string containing the concrete HTML associated. I already created those concrete types like body, head, table, p, h1, etc. All of them returning the respective HTML tag, although some of them, like the case of body and table, have an array of tags as parameters. Let's prepare a web view to receive those objects adding a new array parameter. And now we will transform those objects into a string containing all the HTML tags. If we use all those objects to build a web page, we will end with something like this. This is definitely better than using string literals, but it's still far away from being a usable web page and the syntax is really weird already. The main problem here is that this is regular Swift code. The compiler is not capable to understand that this is something to build an HTML page. For that reason, we will have to carry over with all the Swift syntax, like array format separating the elements between commas. But this is just the beginning. What will happen if we want to use conditionals to hide or show an element? Well, we can use a statement inside this web view, but we'll have to either use ternary conditional expressions or moving this out of the web view to use a more complex operation. Notice how we are using an empty heading here because we can't use optionals. In order to use them, we will have to refactor body initializer to accept optionals, but that will trigger a lot of more issues and the pain of unwrapping operations. Now, what if we want to use loops to build the table dynamic instead of being static. This will require a lot of effort to fulfill the compiler requirements too, ending in boilerplate code and making it less readable. I think it's time to use Result Builder to fix all those issues and create a DSL to build our HTML page. Let's create a new struct called HTML Builder and add Result Builder attribute. This will trigger a compiler issue because a Result Builder struct needs to implement at least one method called build block. A block, in this case, is just a piece of code that will be part of the final result to build the DSL syntax. In other words, in build block method, we will configure how Swift will recognize this syntax. And there are many methods that we are going to explore in just a moment. For this build block method, we will define the most basic example, an empty component. Let's provide the component type return it has an array of HTML tags, remove all parameters, and returning an empty array object. 
Now let's go to head and body and modify the init to receive a content closure and add the new HTML builder we just created. Adding HTML builder here, we are telling Swift that this is not a regular closure, but a result builder, and it will verify the rules described there at compile time. Let's remove the previous code from web view and add HTML builder to its initializer too. Now we can see that an empty closure is compiling, which is a signal that we are doing well. Now what if we add the heading object? This error means our build block is not accepting any arguments, which is correct. Swift doesn't know how to interpret this expression yet. Let's go back to HTML Builder to add another build block. Notice how Swift can infer the types needed. This time, build block is providing a list of arrays, but for our current case, we don't need arrays of arrays, but array of single elements. With this build block returning a variadic list of HTML tags, we can just return that list directly and look how the project is compiling again. This is not only allowing H1 being usable in web view, but now we can use head and body too. And even we can insert H1 inside body thanks to HTML builder in body. This is getting nice. Now we can also bring title and meta to head object and even paragraph is working as expected. Now let's bring the table. To do that, let's add HTML builder to its initializer. The empty table is working. Now we will need to add HTML builder to TR in it. Now that TR is ready, we can start filling out our table. Look how we got what we had at the beginning of the video. But now, the syntax is more readable and according to the HTML structure, we can normally see in web pages. But wait, there is more. What if we want to build a table dynamically with result builders? This is really easy to do. To demonstrate this, I will use this table from PokemonDB.net that shows a table with the move pool that a Pokemon can learn. Let's use this one from Flareon, one of my favorite Pokemons. I have stored all that info in this sample object already. Now, in order to display the sample list in this table, we will have to create a loop to iterate over each row. However, this is not allowed by our result builder yet. If we want to use loops in a result builder, let's override build array method in HTML builder. Build array will provide a list of arrays. The outer list represents the loop on all its iterations, and the inner array contains the block to be displayed, like all TD objects. For our case, we simply need to flat the outer arrays and return them. If we go back to web view, we will see a different error this time, meaning that arrays of HTML tags are not confirming HTML tag protocol. This is happening because Swift needs one more build block to understand that each array is also part of this syntax. Let's add build block with a list of arrays this time. And now the project is compiling again. Now let's add the header. If we do that right now, we will see another syntax issue. This is because Swift cannot match this isolated expression with any configuration from HTML Builder. In order to Swift to be capable to recognize this expression, let's add build expression in HTML Builder. Here, the expression type is a single HTML tag. Let's convert it to array and satisfy the return type. Look how the project is compiling again and the table is rendered in the screen. Fantastic! Finally, let's configure conditionals. Let's bring that flaring picture to our demo. I've created a new HTML tag to display images in the screen. This EMG will support two attributes, alt and style. If we want to add it to our web view, we will need to provide the URL. But since this URL might fail, let's use a conditional to verify the URL is valid. But now we got another issue. This control flow is not supported yet. Let's fix that using build optional. Here, we need to define what we're going to do in case the component is nil. For our case, let's return an empty array, otherwise let's return the default component. Now the issue is gone, and if we send an incorrect URL, look how the image and paragraph are gone. We can even add an else case to show no image text. 
but this will require one more configuration in HTML Builder. We will have to provide build either methods. The first one represents the if case being true, and the second one represents the else case. We simply need to return the respective component and we are good to go. Look how no image text is displayed in the screen. And look how this code is working as expected. But the syntax is more readable and convenient to build web pages now. And all of this has been made in Swift thanks to Result Builders. Let me know in the comments if you would like to learn more about Result Builders or implementing web pages with Swift. Now that we know how Result Builders work in Swift, in the next episode we will implement Reducer Protocol in the Composable Architecture. Stay tuned. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.